on the spot, at the spot. The spot in Soto with the big homie Nick. We at the spot. Soto! We at the spot, Soto. Spot, Soto. On the spot, at the spot, Soto, Seattle. Man, pull out your blunt, grab your drink, get your notepad. Cause it's a lot of it's game. A lot of Over here on this spot at the spot, man. You know, once again, man. I always say we got a great episode, but I'm gonna say we got a cold episode, man. So you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying right now, man. We're gonna start, man, left to right, all the way at the end. Man, introduce yourself. It's Isla. Um, Isla dot bands on Instagram. Bands with a Z. Yo, you know me, Mr. McGlover here at the spot on the spot, man. What it do? CC Charles Cosby, the original Cocaine Cowboys, East Oakland's finest. Bitch. Man, man, you know, man, St. Nick, of course, man. We got Rob Nova with our production, man. We got Barack over there in the corner, man, always and shit, man. They give us his dialect and intellect, you feel me? Kendra's mm -hmm. running off, man. You know, it was Kendra's week this week, so we really wasn't uh, doing no filming this week, but, um, you know, we got, man, Mr. Cosby in here, man, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's a pleasure, man, and a blessing, man. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So, man, you know what I mean? So... Some of these motherfuckers don't really know who you are, man. You know, kind of, man, to give them a little bit of taste, man. Well, as I said, I'm from East Oakland. Uh, I've been around a long time. You know what I'm saying? I uh, got in the game many, many years ago. Uh, damn near 40 years ago, I got in the game in East Oakland. Uh, was one of the fortunate ones to be able to make out unscathed, uh, to live to tell my story, which I did in Cocaine Cowboys 2, Hustle with the Godmother. Uh, uh, with Griselle de Blanco. Uh, so Cocaine Cowboys 2 went on to uh, become a number one sole documentary, uh, true crime documentary, uh, who's number one on Netflix for six consecutive years, number one on uh, uh, MSNBC, number one on the Nat Geo channel, and number one on uh, uh, Biography channel as well. Uh, so again, uh, I'm just thankful to still be here to tell my story and thankful that the interest is still there. And I'm also thankful to be surrounded by a group of really, really great guys. It's my man, pleasure. Man, pleasure's man, all it's ours, our pleasure, man. man. Man, um, how you like it up here, man? You've been traveling uh, through this Northwest, but uh, how's it been treating you? Uh, well, I have a very fun connection with, with Seattle from back in the 90s when I used to be breezing through here, you know what I'm saying, associate with certain people who was out here at that time. Uh, I've always loved Seattle. You know, uh, not in the winter, though. This Oakland backyard, <laughs> this Bay backyard up here, you know, Portland up here, you know. Absolutely. The I-5 corridor, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, but around Oakland, you say Oakland, what time, what, around what year? Like, what, 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 what was you raising? We 80s babies, 80, 90 babies, you know? Well, I don't want to get my age, but. No, of course not. But I'm a 60s baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm a 60s baby. Uh, raised in the 70s, of course. You know, I uh, was a part of the Black Panther uh uh, food program as a child. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, you know, participated in that. You know, I did things that the average kid did, you know, play football, play baseball, you know, it was mischievous as most kids are. Do you remember, this funny you brought, you brought up the Black Panthers, you remember a time when it was like that black love, that black unity in Oakland, when it was strong, because for a minute, that you know, that's where the Panthers came from, you know? Can you use the, the love, you know what I'm saying? You think the love is still there and open like it was back then? Well, when I, when, when I was a kid, uh, as you guys might contest to as well, we respected our elders. No matter if he was a wino on the corner or whoever it was, you know, if they were older than us, you always, you was taught to respect your elders. Uh, so as of now, you know, that love is gone. It's, 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 it's long gone. You, know you what think I mean? so? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a ho I hope not, man. I hope not. If somebody's still out there, you know, doing the right thing, hopefully, man. But, uh, well, it's, you don't it's, see it too it's, often. I it's, it's, it's far and few, I would say, that's yeah. doing the right thing. You know what I mean? But, but like, as a kid, you know, you helped your neighbors, you know, yeah, your elderly neighbors, tough. bring the groceries, groceries in the house. In the house. You know, you cut the grass for them, free of charge. Pull out their trash, man, you know, just, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, those trash day, those old. Garbage yeah. can to the curb, you know what I'm saying, on Thursday mornings or whatever. So that's actually lost, you know what I mean? You know, these youngsters nowadays, you know, I actually call them Thundercats. You know what I'm saying? They they they, they microwave, microwave, microwave babies, they want everything fast. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they have to understand nothing comes fast except a car crash. You know what I'm saying? But they want it fast. They want it right here. You know what I'm saying? They're not even thinking about tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? They don't focus on today, you know, which, which is a big mistake. What would you say, what, 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 you know what I mean? And, you know, not, nah, man, we're going to get away from your age and shit, but what would you say to the years when Oakland started to change? I would say the late 70s, early 80s, it started to change. What, you, what, what, what would you say would be the, the effect of that? What do you think, would, in your opinion? Well, my opinion Allegedly. Is, uh, allegedly, when, when drugs in, invaded the scene, Hmm. You know, uh, talking about cocaine. Yeah. Like maybe 82, 83, or, uh, somewhere around those years. And so when drugs infiltrated our community, East Oakland, West Oakland, whatever, Oakland in general, that's when everything, you know, as far as our social structure, it went downhill and it went downhill fast. Well, because, you know, the, the reason I ask that, because, you know, they say, you know, UCLA, they came up with crack cocaine in UCLA, and the Bay was the first place they took it to. Then they, then from the Bay, they brought the recipe to L.A. I heard the same story. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, a lot of people don't know, you know, uh, us saying that, you know, a lot of people don't know that. Because I tell people, I'm like, yeah, man, niggas was getting money in L.A., but you know, nigga, the Bay was the first place that. Yeah, yeah, the the the, the, the Bay had. They made it a cookie? The, the Bay. You saying they made the, it, the Bay made it a cookie first? They made it a, the they, Bay had real cocaine kingpins. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Black kingpins, you know what I mean? And I'm 13, 14 years old at the time, maybe even younger, but you would see guys, I mean, in Rolls Royces, which was unheard of. A young black guy driving a Rolls Royce. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it, it hit our community and hit it hard. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of us, or a lot of our family members suffered yeah. because of it. Yeah, man, because, uh, you know, my, my mom was a substance abuser. But she go back when they were eat the cooking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's like when you, when you, when the, when the recipe changed. I can remember eighty three, eighty four being really mom's taking nigga to get something to eat. But she been had a, us as kids in the motherfucking dope house, mm -hmm. and she smoking away. And it's like, man, you feel me? And you 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 get a chance to look at it from from both sides. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? You look at it from the side of damn. Okay, this is me being a kid, but the first and the fifteenth comes, so I know. Let me hurry up and ask for $100 so I can have school clothes and money for lunch mm -hmm. before mom go blow that. Mm -hmm. And then, then you would look, man, and I'm, I'm looking and I'm seeing the hustlers and they have it. And it's like, whoa, he cool. That nigga buying ice cream for the, he still making sure the, you know what I mean? That the, the lights stay on. Mm -hmm. You know, mom's fucked off the video game scene. <laughs> so the nigga came back, nigga, and double back, nigga. He know you play ball, nigga, buy you some cleats or something. That's right. Mom. Real, real talk, real talk. Mm -hmm. Hey, shit. So it's like, you know, I, I always look at it, like I say, I always look at it from two two ways. And two perspectives. Yeah. Man, I have to. Because, you know, it. in one one way, it it benefited, and in another way, it took. You know, and it's like, you know, no different watching these youngsters off of fentanyl now and everything else, man. S same scenario, different, different faces, different drugs, but same scenario, pretty much. So, you know, I got a question. What would make, because, you know, I watched the show, man, did my homework, man. You know, you got this, man, you know, you got your book, man, you know, Hustling, man, Hustling, man, you know what I'm saying, with the Godmother, man, that I suggest everybody go check out, my nigga, you know what I mean? Motherfuckers don't, hey, your brain is a muscle. Read. Work the muscle. Absolutely. Real talk. First off, you a cold motherfucker, man, to strategically sit back and, you know what, I'm going to write this one, because... I don't know these motherfuckers don't understand. When they go to the pen, ain't nobody writing them and sending them shit. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so what, what, what was you thinking? Honest to God, man. What, okay. what was you thinking? Okay, so we'll back up a little bit. So as I was saying, I got in the game in 1984, the summer of 1984 to be exact. Uh, but even before then, I was I was, I was was always a hustler. It just, it just wasn't drugs. It was other things I was hustling. You know, I was breaking cars and steal their blah pump uh, cassettes. Sell them. So I was always a hustler. First time I went to jail, I was I was five years old. Uh, by the time I was eleven, I'd been in jail maybe ten times. So I was okay. always a hustler. I was always a mischievous kid. You know, I was a latchkey kid before the term latchkey was popular. Because my mom, she worked, and you know, she did other things. My brothers and sisters, they were out doing their thing, and I was the youngest. Uh, 
So I was always a hustler. So when 1984 came, you know, all my friends, all my peers, you know, they got in the game. And so they having money. And I wanted to be a part of, of that subculture. Uh, so I got involved in it. And, you know, I, I did fairly well, you know, for my age. I'm 16 years old at the time. Yeah. So now we're fast forwarded uh, to Griselda. So she got arrested in 1985. February to be exact, in uh, Southern California. And that always stuck out in my mind, you know, because I, I never knew a woman who, you know, who sold drugs. Well, I knew a woman who sold weed, but not hard drugs as far as cocaine is concerned. And uh, so now we're fast forwarded uh, to 1991. So I met a former associate of Griselda's. And so she was the connection between Griselda and I. And so I gave her an ounce of coke to, you know, to form the connection. She did. So Griselda contacted me back after I sent the initial uh, query letter to her. And so she definitely uh, picked up what I was laying down. Hmm. And, uh, so the rest, as you can say, is, is history. You know, and it was a really great run, uh, about a, about a six-year run. You know, we did some incredible numbers. You know, I met some very influential people, you know, on the Colombian side. And, uh, you know, created some, some everlasting friendships as well yeah. to let, this let, day. Let me stop you real quick, brother, interrupt. What did you have in the letter? What did you say in the letter? People, that was a hell of a letter. A life-changing letter, you know? What was it? What did you say to her, man? If you read this book, you, you'll you see what I said. If you her. read what? It's in there word for word. It's in your word for word. Word for word. Man, hold that man. Hold that man again, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. For real. Because you want to know what he said to not a million, wait, million way more than a million dollars. She was way, way, way more than that, right? Yeah, she was a billionaire. With a billionaire. Piece. Yeah. Man, you got to learn how to read, man. Read and write, man. Express yourself, man. Articulate and, and you know, yourself. Is, though, I've always been a great writer since I was a kid. Yeah. Although I would always fuck up, you know. My my strongest subject was, was, was English and writing. That was my strongest subject. Math, you know, I don't really care about math so much. But yeah, English was my strongest subject and I could always, I could always write. So it came naturally to me. Man, you knocked off the godmother, the godmother, yeah, man. Yeah, the godmother cocaine. That's the god, you knocked the... Hey, you, I hey, mean, you, hey, hey, you, you, you got to understand. From some street nigga, I'm going to ask you some real shit. When, when is the first, the most respectful to everybody, but when was the first time she, like, really broke it off? Like, you was like... <laughs> well, the, the thing of it is, though, so... Uh, when we first started communicating... I was I was on probation. I was on a felony probation for a machine gun, and uh, so I was able to visit her right away. So it took like uh, it took like maybe about four or five or six months. So during that time, you know, we cultivated a, a very close friendship. You know, we spoke on the phone uh, maybe ten times a day, mm -hmm. in addition to writing letters back and forth. She was yeah. fluent, fluent in English, you know, as well as Spanish, of course, and so. By the time I saw her for the very first time, you know, it was like we have been knowing each other, you know, our whole lives. Yeah. You know, so we were wow. comfortable in each other's presence. Yeah. Uh, hey, well, you know, because it's, it's, it's just, man, just being real, it's a lot of illiterate motherfuckers out in this world. Oh, so. oh yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So they they wouldn't understand how the way that we look at it in a sense, man, you know what I'm absolutely, saying? Absolutely, like, absolutely. Man, you know what I mean? Like, whoa, and the okay. thing of it is, I've always been in, an opportunist as well. Huh. You know, so when I see opportunity, you know what I'm saying, I grab that shit and I exploit it. Like a motherfucker. Absolutely. I swear. Hey, man, you a baby. Like, like any hustle, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, like any hustle worth his weight will do. He, you know he, what I'm saying? And then, so and then we, see, we see, didn't expect see, nothing different. Yeah, see, also I was raised under pimping because uh, Gangster Brown, his dad, Globe, was my mother's husband all throughout the 70s. So, you know, as a kid, you know, I sat back and watched Gangster Brown come in and out of my house. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, I picked up on that ism, you know. I've never been a pimp, but I think I'm the greatest pimp to ever live. But I've never pimped one hoe. 
Man, hell hey, man. Hey, I can't knock you on that one and shit like that. Because if you're going to knock a bitch, I guess that would be the one that you're going to shoot for. Absolutely. Yeah. Pass them out all the other ones up, huh? <laughs> man, you know what I mean? Saving nigga a lot of time. Absolutely. Come in. He said, on. absolutely. <laughs> no headache. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't say that. I, I'm pretty sure he came with his share of headaches. Well, you know, it's got his drawbacks. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's got his drawbacks. <laughs> I mean, man, you know, man. Hey, I, yeah, because. It's like, all right, let, let's be real. This ain't the average woman that's just having some money. Absolutely. Right. So it's like, you know, what what in your mindset, like, cause you know, you know, it's niggas that fuck off an ounce. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's be real. It's just Absolutely. niggas fumble, niggas fumble an ounce. Absolutely. A pound of weed and Absolutely. shit. Absolutely. Nigga, this ain't me. You already know. It's my motherfucking man. It's a hit squad coming and shit like that. Absolutely. What's you your know. man? Come on, man. So we, we like, man, no, no fear. Just no fearless. No you, you know what? To, to be honest with you, my brother, uh, I've never been afraid of nothing in my life. Let's talk that period. shit. You know talk what I'm saying? Shit. I've never been afraid of nothing standing on two feet in my life. Maybe a <laughs> line or something like that, yeah. But as far as a man, I've never been afraid of nobody in my life. That's why I was never afraid to take the chances I took. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm I'm fearless and and to some degree, you know, that can work against you. Mm. But it's always worked in my favor, fortunately for me. But yeah, I've never had any fear. You know, even now at 54 years old, I told my age, but 54 years old, I, I you know, I, I I have no fear of nothing or what nobody can do to me, nobody <laughs> harming me or whatever. I have no fear at all. Real talk. I mean, shit. It's not me. It's not meant for you. That's right. You know what I mean? On the real, man. So you supposed to be somewhere, man, you know what I mean? Feet up. That's right. Enjoying life, man. That's right. That's what I'm doing. Come on, man. That's what I'm doing. Man, come on now. So, man. Well, you be parlaying that, man, nowadays, man. You be just bouncing. Uh, Well, I spend six months out of the year in Dominican Republic. I have family there. I have houses there. Uh, You know, so. That's beautiful out there. We was talking about it later. It's it's, it's actually paradise, to be honest with you. It's paradise, beautiful beaches, beautiful culture, beautiful people, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I prefer there over America, to be totally honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You can get your own independence and so to speak oh, out there. Absolutely. And then, you know, the dollar goes so far out there. Man, live like a boss. You know, you you could uh, go out to $250,000 and live good the rest of your life. Bye. Bye. Absolutely. You moved to the DR. What's up, man? Hi. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I moved there. Um, what's the weather? Warm? <laughs> All the time? Uh, it's tropical, yeah. 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 Would she fit in in the DR? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, huh? <laughs> they, yeah. they, them Dominican guys would love her. Oh, man. I'm thinking about pina coladas. <laughs> Palm trees. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sounds huh. great. They six, okay, of, six months out of the year, the papers. other six months, you're <laughs> bouncing around? Like, no, they think about them papers. <laughs> why, why do you leave for the other six months? I would never leave. Yeah, well, I, I got business <laughs> commitments here. Mm. So, you know, I come here, take care of my business. And I just got back uh, four days ago. Mm. You know, me and my, my 11-year-old son, we were there for... Right out of the month, right? When I saw you, yeah. I saw you like like right out of the month we were there. Right out of the month, man. Hey, he was a man. Of, hey, man, shout out to this man, though, for real. Man of his word, he said a month. You told me a month. I told you a month. I and, and, and for and, real, for and, I knew this he was you. floating around. Met him in Portland, man. Shout out to my niggas out there, Bama. You know what I mean? We met him in the Bama, barbershop. Yeah, dude. Bama, that's shout out, man. Real Portland, dude. all day through there, man. And uh, met him out there, and he came. And, man, br- Came in, man, blessed us. You At know what I mean? Man, day, all word. man got us his word. Okay. Like he we said, man wasn't scared either. You know what I mean? I don't care. We got a mansion, a million dollars in the bank. At the end of the day, all a man got is his word. Yeah. Man, shit, man. Man, we appreciate you being on the spot, bro. Absolutely. At the spot. I appreciate you. For me? real, for real, man. My I'm nigga looking kind of fly over there in that. Show that jersey, though, boy. Oh, look at him. <laughs> oh, man, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, I'm jumping out of cakes and shit like fly that, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, man, we man, we marketing around LA here, man. That's what I'm you. saying. <laughs> I'm still, man. I'm, man, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my mind around this, man, because you know what I'm saying. It, it's not just when we sitting with a street legend, man, but you know what I'm saying. Like, man, for real, it's just a, a real enterprise, mere billion dollar thinker. Yeah, because that. It, see, it, I it, it's hard. It, see, it's hard for the concept of because. 
a lot of people never been to jail. A lot of people never sat. A lot of people ain't never had to write somebody. A lot of people had to take They don't know how letter. big that is. That's big. That's big. That's big. <clears throat> so it's like, man, it do it, man. You know what I'm saying? And with the t- and it and it worked out, man. You know, a brother from East Oakland, man. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. That that's cause you know, see, I blow my yoga get us mucho. So you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'm man, I'm from LA. Yeah. So they ain't it ain't it don't be too friendly. Oh yeah. I'm it, I'm I'm already knowing. I'm already it, knowing. It, it done so for and, so and, so and, for and, a man. You from Inglewood at that. Oh yeah. mama. Oh shout out in good. Oh, you from Inglewood. Yeah. So it's like to me and, and and to make them moves, you know what I mean, and to do what it is and 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 we still sitting here, man, you know what I mean? That's a blessing within itself. It, 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 it really is because, like, so, like, since 1984, really up until, like, this point, I've probably lost 400 friends to, to homicide. You know what I'm saying? That's just homicide and maybe three or 400 more to the prison system. You know what I'm saying? So, like, everybody I've grown up with since, you know, elementary school to now, you know, really there's nobody left, to be honest with you. And uh, so, I'm, 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 I consider myself very fortunate. You know, yeah. not lucky, but fortunate, because that's God's plan. You know what I'm saying? So, but you know, I don't even think I, I scratched the surface yet of my full potential. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because even at my age, I'm, I'm still growing. I'm still learning. You know what I'm saying? I'm still advancing. You know what I mean? So, but from here on out, though, you know, like I, I've had everything that money can buy. So from here on out, it's my job to help people who really don't have anything or give people opportunity that they wouldn't ordinarily get, you know what I mean? So that's my joy now, helping the the underprivileged. What's one thing that they don't know about, man, you know, Mr. Cosby, man, that you can tell people out here? Uh, be whatever, man. I mean, it can be if you build sailboats, it, man. Just... Uh, oh, well, I know how to fly a helicopter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you do that in DR? No, no, I haven't flown in years, but I still know same instrumentations. I still know how to fly a helicopter. Uh, I know how to. I know how to cut diamonds. Uh, uh, Where do you learn that at? <laughs> self-taught, self-taught. I'm self-taught completely. Uh, but it's it's a lot of things I, I can do. But like I say, I, I I get enjoyment in helping other people. You know, the yeah. underprivileged. You know, so like uh. I was in Portland yesterday. Uh, I was coming from my daughter's house, and uh, this guy was walking down the street, right? Yeah. And so a white guy, he didn't have no shirt or no shoes on, just jeans, and it was kind of sprinkling a little bit. So I had my, my, my bag in the trunk. So I pulled over and gave him a pair of my shoes and a coat, you know what I'm saying? A, 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 um, a polo pea coat, the big heavy one. Yeah. You know, and he hugged me, he said, I love you. You know, I never met a guy in my life and probably never see him again in my life. Yeah. You know, but at that moment, you know, I was the most important thing to that man. I, I you know, I made a difference in his life. I made a lot. So yeah. that, that's what make me feel. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand, I understand, because you know what I mean? Because, you know, you ever think, man, is it, is it, would you say it's the environment or it's the choices? people make what would you well, say it's not even environment people are responsible for their own choices you can make good decisions or bad decisions i give you a perfect example so me and my older brother uh brian garcia cosby he he got my mother's mate name mm-hmm. um so we grew up in the same household right so when he went away to college you know, I made a left, he made a right turn to college. I made a left turn, I started in the streets, right? So my brother became a, a, a clinical psychologist. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Raised by the same mother, same single parent. And so I sold drugs and he became a doctor. So it's the, the choice we make, it's never an environment. You know, so a lot of times people say environment, but that's just an excuse, that's a crutch. Hmm. It's never an environment. It's the choice we make as individuals. I'm in green. No with cop you. outs, pretty much. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. <clears throat> man, I'm in green with you on that one. Man, no yeah. real. Man, what kind of toys you had, man? Going through it, fucking with you, man, doing this other shit, man. You know, you uh, gave back, you know. What, what, what kind of, what, what's up? Just, you know, that's what we want to know, man. Niggas fly shit. Uh, 
Damn, out of every car you think of, it still got a few nice toys. You didn't have the Rolls? Uh, yeah, I just sold that actually. Uh, sold the Rolls. Uh, not even a month ago. I wanted 150 for it. It was 2000. I wanted 154 and I got 150 for it. You like you know, them old schools? My nigga fuck with them old schools. Uh, well, you know, I'm actually looking at the Dons now. I like Dons. Dons. Yeah, I love Dons. And I see Gucci Man just sold his Ray of Don. So I was looking at that, I think, maybe two days ago. So I'm going to call and inquire about that. Uh, but I got a Wraith as well. I got a Wraith. It's actually in, uh, in Newport Beach. Yeah. I got a McLaren in Newport Beach. Uh, you know, but that that's really not important to me now. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. I had all that for so yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. You know, right. and like you, your, your bands, I got an S63, just same color as yours. Uh, and I got an S550, just like yours, two door coupe. I got a black black on red one. And uh, so, you know, I, I got toys, but you know. Man, I, the most. Know what kind of car I got, man. Damn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No. And then that pretty white thing, that cocaine white thing. That motherfucker bad, huh? I got, I, I got the, yeah. Yeah, I got the S five fifty. Man, oh my same, same man. one. Oh my Absolutely. Man. Say, baby, man, you man, you like good taste, man. You like your cars, man. Oh, yeah. You know, I like my cars like I like women. <laughs> uh, got to, got to be sexy. What kind of woman does Mister Cosby like, man? Uh, I like a wide range of women. You know what I'm saying? You know, black, white, okay. Asian, okay. Dominican. You know what I'm saying? Nice. If they're beautiful, got a good personality. Good head on his shoulders. You know, I fuck with him. I don't discriminate. Man. If she, you seen her out in the DR, man. Is it a go? What, what would you, remember that conversation we was having earlier? When she was sizing up Barack over there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then yeah, she was yeah, sizing yeah, up yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. You were sizing Listen. everybody up. <laughs> man, you see in the DR, man, he's shining. He in the what? What you got out there? The, the, the Rafe? The Don? Something nice. Something fat than a motherfucker. Some nice. Something fat than a motherfucker. Uh, what you going to do? What you? What is you thinking? What do you think I'm thinking? <laughs> you know, I, I just pull up on you. I'm like, you know. Bam. I pull up on uh, you. My name is Charles Cosby. You know what I'm saying? I'm single. Hope you're single as well. You know what I'm saying? Why don't you jump in? Let's grab some ice cream or something. Get Ooh. better acquainted. Because you know it's hot, huh? I don't know. <laughs> If I'd get in the car right away. Okay, well, you know, let's take a small, let's take a small chance. <laughs> let's take a small chance. You know, give me, give me. So uh, you're you're hopping in the car I with mean, a stranger if a bad for bitch, If a bad bitch, if a bad <laughs> bitch pull up on me, and that's your problem. If, if a bad bitch pull up on me, and she in offers traffic, all it takes is ice dime, cream, ladies, you heard it. Pull I, up I on him with ice cream. Wait, you did worse. I He's did worse. I did a lot worse. I did I did some things I'm not proud of, but I can't even repeat it. I did worse. Say nigga, shame. Look at his son sometimes. Oh man, you know what I'm saying? Oof, if it wasn't flies on the motherfucking wall, uh, if they can talk, <laughs> <laughs> I've did worse, man. Yeah, on we, the we, spot, we all had to spot, man. Sure, right? Nah, man. Come on, man. The, the walk of shame sometimes, man. 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 Being younger and shit like that, man. You feel me? Because certain everybody depends on certain things and movements and how they come up. And yeah, man, it's a couple fat bitches, man, that won me. <laughs> I'm sitting here right now, man. Like, I think about it, man, to this yeah, day, man, traumatized. Pay they uh, oh, like, oh, yeah, oh, I hate to be so weird. <laughs> hey, I fucked him before on YouTube. <laughs> when, oh, it's so So you bad. know it's coming, huh? Probably already happening. Yeah, it's happening man. as we speak. Someone's watching this right now and going, am I that? Is, is that me? It is what it is. It, it is, is, what, it is, is what, what it is at this point. <laughs> Bring it know. on, huh? Ops, you know, just the gigolo. Yeah. All that I know. <laughs> Here with the old school on that one and shit. Because that's the only thing this motherfucker can say. Man, what like, you got new coming up, bro? Uh, well, we're working on my film now. We're in pre production. Uh, it's at, 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 as of now, it's called Legacy. Okay. Uh, director, uh, we put on the contract, uh, Wes Miller. He's a very. Uh, acclaimed director he's African American his last movie was with Bruce Willis so he's directing uh, and so it's going to be a big project you know he did his director's pass uh, like maybe three months ago I believe okay. completed his director's pass and uh, you know screenplay is amazing mm. so as of now like I said we're in pre pre-production we're interviewing the talent so we should have them seated and under contract in about another another month or so you got any They'll, names you going to you got any names? Uh, 
Well, I'm not supposed to say anything, <laughs> but uh, the front runner for the, the, the play me would be Michael B. Jordan. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah, man. So, don't you know, say that, that, we that, to, that, Don't say that too loud. We got to spot yeah, on the so spot. That, so that, you, know uh, <laughs> you heard it though. So that's kind of big, <laughs> right? That's that's yeah. That ain't no kind of to it. Absolutely, yeah, that's big. Man. That's big. That's big, man. For real. For so real. we just gotta wait and see. You know, we gonna wait and see, man. It's gonna fall through. You know, in fact, I mean? y'all gonna be the first ones to know when I know, man. For oh, sure, man, man. That's blessings right there, man. Absolutely, for real, for real man. But right now, though, you know, they still can get that motherfucking book and shit like that, man. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, Four hundred pages. Hustle with the Godmother. Uh, my autobiography. Uh, it's a lot of game in there. You know what I'm saying? Ups and downs, highs and lows. You know, but everybody, you know what I'm saying, can take something from that book. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of lessons in that book. And uh, you would definitely enjoy reading it. So I'm going to re-release it uh, uh, within the next uh, maybe two months or so. And you better, you know, get an autographed copy Man, listen, man, all you square-ass motherfuckers that be watching these motherfuckers on YouTube, sending a little chump change to, man, hey, this is a real, this is somebody's real life that did something that your, your big homie ain't gonna never do. It ain't gonna never happen again. So, you know what I'm saying? If you don't come and support, man, and check out, man, you know what I'm saying, what it is, you're not gonna see, man. You feel me? You know, man, y'all need to talk about this buyback, but buy black and everything like this, man, here's your chance, man. I'm giving you the challenge and shit. You feel me? Because this, you got a cold story. Like, again, I, if everybody don't know, you got a cold story. So for them to be making a movie, for them, man, you know, for them to have a book, man, that's game. You know what I'm absolutely, absolutely. That's I, game. I, I break it down from A to Z. Whatever you want to know about the game, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's in that book. That's like a Bible. So, you know, I, I, pour, I poured my heart out. You know what I mean? It took, it took me four years to write it. Yeah. Let me ask you a question, man. In the game, you know, everybody knows highs and lows. We talked a little bit about the cars, but, man, just speak on, if you can, man, just some of the lows, some of the low lows in the game. Because everybody, you know, especially now on social media, everybody you see the high, niggas got money. And, you know what I mean? Man, tell, tell me, if you can't share, like, experience or two, like, like your lowest point, like, like. Well, the lows, of course, would be getting arrested and losing everything. You know what I'm saying? It might have took you five years to build your situation up, and that can be taken in, in one day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because when they come, they coming. Mm -hmm. They done did all their homework, so they, they coming. They coming with not only uh, uh, the task force, but they also come with the tow trucks too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They gonna take everything you got. <laughs> they come with all the trucks. Including the clothes in your closet. They taking everything. You know what I'm saying? So that's one of the low points of the game. Uh, the high point is like even you know, when I had, you know, millions of dollars, uh, I was still always hungry, right? I, I I thought like a millionaire and I hustled like I was broke. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Thought like a millionaire and hustled like I was broke. You know what I'm saying? I stayed hungry. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, the hardest part of becoming a millionaire is making your first million. That's the hardest part. And then after that, it's easy. The cycle just repeats itself. You know what I'm saying? So, like... Like, some people might be hard to make $10,000, and then they finally make $10,000, right? So, and then just we keep repeating that cycle. You make another 10. So, same thing with making a million dollars. Same formula, but except just bigger numbers. Yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. Ups and downs, man, you know what I'm saying? I speak on it. Absolutely. What's the dumbest thing you ever spent some money on that you look back and like, damn? Probably just a whole bunch of jewelry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jewelry get old and depreciates. You know what I'm saying? So I would have to say jewelry, you know, maybe half a million dollars on jewelry mm. that you would never get back. Yeah. Big chunky shit, huh? Yeah. You, you, you just stupid, never get like, back. just shit just hurt your neck. Yeah. But I, I, uh, some aspects I was smarter because I bought loose diamonds, you know what I'm saying? Like five care diamonds Hell and shit yeah. like that. So I kind of got some money back on that, you know what I'm saying? But as far as like, you know, just regular jewelry, you know, you don't get your money back off of that. You fuck with precious metals? No, nah, no. Nah. No. I should have back in the day, because back in the day, you could ounce, you could ounce to go, you know, a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. Now it's going for like almost two thousand dollars an ounce now. Man, that's what uh, up in Florida, man. Them jewelers, that's what they was telling me. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. So oh yeah. Oh yeah. Man, yeah, man, we get your money. So man, we bought fucking gold back in the fucking. It, it went up. Yeah, you could buy like like a uh, 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 
uh, Cougar Rand coins because they're, they're an ounce. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? $150, $200, you know what I'm saying? And now they, you know, $3,000 okay. a coin. Depending on, yeah, what, if it's gold, silver. Man, shit. The cold party is, man, what is it, 80, 90% goes to the jeweler? Absolutely. So when you niggas is buying these chains, man, these big pieces and stuff like that, 80% goes to just the jeweler. And, 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 like, and then like what these guys don't realize, like a lot of these rap guys, so, you know, they invite these guys in, you know, certain jewelers where I'm not going to say no names, but, and so they always think that they get a deal, the the the, the, the buyer, the rappers. Yeah, of course. But, you know what I'm saying, out the gate, he mark it up, you know what I'm saying, two or three times more than it's actually worth. He mark it up. So then he dropped the price down to maybe half of the markup. So he's still making a killing off these dudes. They think they get a deal, but they really not. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're, they're not. They get fucked up all the way around the board. You know, these guys, they, they making some great, great pieces, but it's, it's not worth it because when they follow hard times, which they will follow hard times, because mm. no, nothing lasts forever. I don't care how much money you got, how many albums you sell, nothing lasts forever. So when they follow hard times, that same jeweler, they're like, well, can you give me, what you give me for this? He gonna give me pennies on the dollar. Real talk. L literally, pennies on the dollar. Because it ain't worth shit. It's not worth anything, you know what I'm saying? And the jewelers know that the jewelers is raping these dudes, you know what I'm saying? But they think they get a deal, but they're not. Watches and shit, man. You know, man, tell them about these watches when they putting these diamonds. Well, in. see, the thing of it is, though, those are not authentic Rolex watches, you know what I'm saying? And Cartier watches, you know what I'm saying? That's aftermarket shit that they're doing. You know what I'm saying? That's not coming from Rolex factory, you know what I'm saying, yeah. with those diamonds. You know what I'm saying? That's aftermarket shit. So that really has no value at all other than to the person who owns it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't take that watch, you know, with all the thousand diamonds in it to a certified Rolex dealer. He'd be like, look at you like, I don't want that shit. That's garbage. That's not factory, factory authorized, which is not. Real talk. Is that because, like, they're busting it down, putting yeah. all the diamonds on there? Yeah, it is. It, that's like, okay, for instance, like, if you get a, if you get a Rolls Royce, right? Uh -huh. And so you put you put a lift suspension on it. You took away from the car. That's not factory authorized. It ain't worth shit now. You switched out the interior custom. Exactly. Just some, you know, some some bubble hearts or some shit. And you know what I'm saying? You, you fucked the car. To, to Gucci. Yeah. All so, Gucci print. Exactly, exactly. So the same thing with, with watches. You know what I'm saying? You add all them diamonds, but that's not factory, factory authorized. You know what I'm saying? That's some aftermarket bullshit. Man, yeah, they getting rich up off them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they raping them dudes, man. They raping them. I mean, it's like, oh, man, it's an AP. It's like, yeah, fam, but it was an AP. It was an AP, exactly. Man, you, Busted. That's what. Yeah. That that that, that, that the term is self-explanatory. That all the beer ain't worth anything now because they 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 tinker with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Added these diamonds and all this shit drilled into it. It ain't it ain't worth it ain't worth nothing now. Man, for real, man. Man, that's I'm just stuff, being man. real. Nah, nah. You told me blast nobody. I'm just being real. Nah, nah. You told me. Hey, y'all heard about the nigga Hutch, the uh, the jeweler guy, Which down one? in Detroit? Nigga Hutch, uh, jewelers up in Detroit guys say they got pilled. He got knocked off. You heard about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the, by the police or what? Like I got knocked off. Somebody knocked him down. Oh yeah, is that right? Mm -hmm. Out of Detroit. Mm -hmm. Took took his jewelry. No, nah, he was a jeweler. They, they shot him on the off. They took some. Oh, he, he died. Yeah, you mean? Yeah, yeah. They oh, shot got knocked him. off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Somebody got over on the money and something, man. I don't know who you be fucking with. Niggas be connected, you know. Look at uh, what was the one that took the BMF motherfuckers uh. What was his name in the jeweler? Scott, not Scott. Oh, you talking, talking about Jacob? Um, Jacob. Jacob. Yeah. yeah, Jacob. Well, you know, you know what? I went to. I was in. Um, allegedly, I was in, right outside D.C. And I went to go see a jeweler. And you know, I just was going for my partner to check in this Rolex. I'm like, man, I'm gonna check one for it. Like, oh, we got to report it. Oh, you well, so so they, they, they looked at the serial number. They ain't even look at before I can even. They just we gotta report. Oh, oh, I got you, I got you. I got like you. report it. What the fuck are you reporting? Because you paying more than ten. I, I or, or, or you know. Man, hey, I get man. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, this is how we man all the way around, man. Nah, I, so I, the, the I, government I gonna know. I just I, went about this. I, I, like, well, I definitely would fuck with. I ain't never had no jeweler to tell me. Well, I gotta report this over ten thousand. You telling me? Hey, you telling me you don't want my business? 
Mm -hmm. Pretty much. That's exactly what he told you. On the real. I'm like, I just looked at the motherfucker like, damn, okay, for sure. I'm not fucking with you, man. I'm like, how you going to report that shit? Mm -hmm. Outside in D.C.? What's that, Commonwealth out there? Maryland, man. Commonwealth? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, that's Commonwealth. What's really, what's the breakdown? I'm, a, I'm somewhat familiar. What's the breakdown of that? What, DM, like, what I DMV? just know they, they can book you a lot more. Yeah, what yeah. It's, man, Commonwealth, man. They can do what the fuck they want to do. It's a territory. Because, like, D.C.'s not really what part of the yeah, U.S., it's, right? It's, 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 a it's, 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 it's a district, yeah. And they got the strictest gun laws in the country. Them in uh, uh, New York City, strictest gun laws in the country. But you can carry, though. Well, see, in D.C., uh, if you're not a politician, what, what lie, they, it's not a federal officer. Yeah, they 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 uh they slam you hard in D.C., hard. Mm. Well, man, you know, shit. That shit, man, them Commonwealth states, man, Philly. Oh, yeah, Virginia. Virginia. Like, man, they, they, they hang, motherfuckers. They ain't giving a fuck. It's nice out there. I mean, yeah, it's love. Love. How is out there? Rob, what's up, man? What's good? Man, shit, chilling. What you doing, man? Yeah. You like, uh. <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying, man? I'm, I'm still, man, you know what I mean? Just sitting back tripping and shit like that, man, you know? Because I know some, men. I know some motherfuckers. I know some fucking females that fall for some of the dumbest shit in the world. So, you know, to knock off one of the Same smartest here. women of the motherfuckers. Here. Like, man, one of the, like, psh, Hey, man, yeah, man, I swear to God, there's some suckers around this motherfucker, too. So it's like, man, you know, it's like to hit for that one, man, from, I'm, I'm talking about, man, from a, from a. I appreciate, I appreciate you, my brother. Hey, you was going in them visiting rooms, knocking her down. Knock <laughs> <laughs> knocking her down. Knocking her down, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you got to. Long, long, long time ago. Long, long, yeah. Yeah. Allegedly, yeah. long, long time ago. Allegedly. Yeah, Excuse my ignorance, brother. <laughs> my unprofessional you good, my brother. You good. You good. Man, would you do that? Do what? Man, be sitting in the pen, man, and meet somebody, man, and a man write you in. Um, I don't know about being already in and then, like, Going from there, I don't know. I mm. haven't experienced that. Mm. I've been in a prison prison visit. Mm. <laughs> you been in a prison visit? Yeah. Yeah? How many times? Twice. Same person? Mm hmm You like jailbirds? Did you no. stop? No. Mm -hmm. Why'd actually... you stop? Um... Did you sneak well, that sack in? <laughs> listen, no, okay, no, okay, allegedly, okay, listen, it was alleged, and to be fair, it was not what no, they thought it was. Y'all answer that. It was not what they thought it was. Um, so there was a little misunderstanding, and... Yeah, yeah. And, that is, and it is what it is. <laughs> I, Meanwhile... I also, hmm. I also got banned from J-Pay, like, video chats. I was like, oh, okay. Apparently, they're very strict, but... They lifted it after a few months. <laughs> 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 what you was yeah, doing? Video chat, what you were sending me. You was sending uh, little it videos all and the everything. Time on accident, on trip. No, like the, you know, like the video visits. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're just like really strict. What'd you do? <laughs> so, so you, 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 you wore a skirt with no underwear on. Well, it was his so, birthday. Something like that. Dig that. Something like that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Dig that. Happy birthday, brother. <laughs> Happy birthday, <laughs> man. Yeah, for real. Made made his year. Yeah, right. man. Yeah. Listen, Happy birthday. Okay. When you, blessed to be alive. When you when you you know have feelings for somebody, you do some questionable things. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I definitely can agree to that. Right. And, relate and then to you it. look back yeah. on those yeah. things like. What the fuck was Damn, that Damn, I didn't have to do all that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Love is the craziest drug. Man. <laughs> hey, them guards watched it on video over oh my and God, over no. and over And that's again. the whole time. Like, every time I would go in, I would just think, I wonder if it's the same, like, guard maybe that, you know, yeah, yeah. happened to see something or was like, oh, I read your letter. <laughs> I heard that phone call. I'm like. Oh, yeah, they definitely <laughs> read that. <laughs> man, that yeah. was someone else. I mean, man, Alice, I respect you for it, man, because, you know what I'm saying, at the end of it all, man, a lot of females wouldn't do no shit like that. So, I mean, I tip my hat off to you and shit, man, 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 your crowds be 
forever embedded in that man's brain right now, man. <laughs> and may a Fifi be He's built probably, in your shrine. Probably in there. He's probably in there just randomly talking to me. And, like... <laughs> and shrined. Man, my... every hey, that man. means a lot. You don't know. Hey, I'm, every cell you can get, nigga. Listen. <laughs> Go hear that story, nigga. That, <laughs> oh, he gonna hear the story. That, that's a lot. Like, I'm not I'm I'm joking. There. Right, no. But that means a lot. You don't even understand. <laughs> what got me is that, like, I had sent him, like, nothing crazy, but, like, you know, pictures, like, just of me and stuff like that. And then um, he had gotten, like, his stuff searched, and they, like, had taken all of his stuff. And I just don't know if he ever got the pictures back. No, no, no. The guards, they, they share that between themselves. They <laughs> I mean, they weren't, like, crazy, you know, nothing like that, but. Them pictures got sold for 10 stamps. Right. Uh, right. Ten soups. Right. Uh, <laughs> and a back of mackerel. I'm sitting here like... <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, man, hey, your picture is enshrined <laughs> on the real right now, man. You know, Listen, shots out to Alice in Wonderland, man. For real. You're welcome. <laughs> man, for I'm real. I'm doing my small part. <laughs> I'm doing what I can. Can I ask you, a, let me ask you a, a question. And, uh, you know, okay, you wrote the letter, boom. She accepted you, you corresponded. Now, dealing with the godmother, you know, did you develop like some kind of, you know, it was business, but did you develop like some kind of a little bit more than business with her? Like, like, like some kind of feelings like towards the godmother, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because like if you're around a person long enough, you know what I'm saying, you naturally develop feelings for them. Right. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you know her personality, you know everything that make her tick, you know her complete makeup. So you, I, you know, naturally just develop feelings if you're around a person long enough. Yeah. Were you scared of her? No, I'm Never been scared of anybody in my life. Man, what's some of the uh, gifts she gave you? Uh, shit, Rolex chains, uh, Rolex watches, uh, mostly jewelry items, you know. Them but she was things. Say, yeah, yeah, well, that too, yeah. But she, 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 she would send my <laughs> mom like a lot of a lot of gifts. Oh, okay. Yeah, she would send my mom a lot of gifts, you know, flowers, uh, uh, crystal vases, you know, so. Man, I got a man. One question: Hey, if it was like that, film, why you didn't stick with it? Well, the thing of it is, so like, she ran into a situation, so which actually predated our relationship mm -hmm. by like nine years, where the state of Florida, okay, so this guy named Reeve, he was her chief hitman. He killed about sixty people himself. So Reevy, uh, they bought up new charges on Reevy, some more than murder charges. He was already doing 25 years of life. Yeah. Or maybe life without. So they bought up new charges on Reevy, new murder charges. So it was a, it was basically a death penalty case. So he's facing a death penalty now. Mm -hmm. He had been in jail a number of years already, you know, like uh, maybe 10 years at that point. So these particular murders, uh, Griselda, she played a part in them. So Reevy agreed to turn uh, state witness mm. and uh, basically snitch on her to save his life. So during that time, uh, this was 97, during that time, you know, she became despondent, you know what I'm saying? Because at that point she had been in federal prison like the better part of 12 years. Yeah. And so her out date was uh, less than 36 months away. You know, so she had had a date. Yeah. So once we found out that the grand jury had convened and listened to Reevee and some other snitches, so she figured she was never going to get out. You know what I'm saying? So she had these crazy ideas. Well, you know, we could kidnap John... Uh, Kennedy Jr., which I detail in my book. Oh, she's tripping. And so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and so tripping. that was her thought was process tripping. at the time. You know, we kidnap him. Uh, we hold him. They release me. And, you know, I fly to Colombia. You meet me in Colombia. Then we go to a country called Montenegro, which they didn't have an extradition treaty with the United States. Mm. So that was the plan. So I told it wouldn't, it wasn't going to work. I said, I, I, that's not going to work. Yeah, it's not, it's, that's not even possible. It's not going to work. So she begged to differ. So 
she went along with it. I followed her. And so the situation exploded in our face. Yeah. So they came to my house. At about the same exact moment, they came to her jail cell. And so they cuffed her up. About the same time, they was cuffing me up. And so they took her to Con Air. She was the only, only inmate on the plane that day. Yeah. They flew her to, I believe, Oklahoma. They slammed her, and then from there, they flew her to Mariana, Florida. They slammed her. You know, no visits, no correspondence, you know. And so she had to stay in her cell 24 hours a day. Only time she was allowed to take showers was like 2 or 3 in the morning when everybody else was asleep. Mm. You know, she was that powerful, right? So that's basically what broke our relationship up. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I I spoke to her against it. I'm like, it's not it's not gonna work. You know what I'm saying? I said, I'm a drug dealer. I deal drugs. I've been doing that all my life. Mm -hmm. If I get caught selling drugs, I'm, I'm gonna lay down. I'm gonna do my time like yeah. a real motherfucker. Because that's what I was. That's what I am. That's what I'm always will be. So to thrust me into a situation that I don't want to be a part of, that's not even gonna work to begin with. That's where, you know, we bumped heads. You know what I'm saying? Because, okay, so we do do this, right? We go to uh, uh, Montenegro, right? So how long will we be able to live peacefully before they come and get us and then we're doing life in American prison? You know, two or three months of freedom, is that worth doing life? So the Navy says it's going to snatch right. you. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying? That so, mother wasn't thinking right. Hey, well, she she wasn't thinking rational because, you know, she wanted to get out of jail because the alternative, uh, the option was, there was no options. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm already in jail. This motherfucker know everything. Yeah. He's finna give it up. Yeah, so Reeve is testifying in the meantime with the grand jury, you know, and he could literally take them where all the dead bodies are. So, so you know, they broke our... Our, our communication up, right? They completely busted it up on purpose. And so then they subpoenaed me. They subpoenaed me. I got a subpoena in my P.O. box, which I, the picture of it is in this book. I detail it in this book. So I went to Florida with my criminal defense attorney and uh, six of my guys, my homeboys. Uh, Richard Hole was my cr criminal defense attorney at the time. He's a Bay Area legend, but he's been disbarred now, though. But yeah. So we went, you know, I went to the uh, uh, deposition, but I didn't have any information, any information to offer them because those three murders occurred nine years prior to our relationship. Yeah. 1982. You know what I'm saying? And so now this is 97. Yeah. I, I wasn't privy to that. That's really the situation. You know what I'm saying? So. I got nothing to do with so, you. So that came about. So while I was in Florida, the secretary for the prosecutor, for the lead prosecutor, so I had sex with her, right? And not knowing that she was also having phone sex with Reevee at the time, right? Having phone sex with the guy. Even for his birthday, she baked him a cake and took the cake to the, to the county jail where he was locked up at. And her husband is a high-ranking police commander. Right? Yeah. And so, so when the Miami Herald got a hold of the information, they published it. So Griselda's attorney, which is probably the best attorney in Miami, Nathan Diamond, he exploited that situation to Griselda's advantage, right? Mm -hmm. And so she went from a death penalty case for three first degree homicides that she ordered to plead into manslaughter with a cap of 20 years under the old sentencing guidelines. So, which means she only do one third of her sentence. So with that 20 years, you know what I'm saying? She did about six years of some change. So she got out in 2004, June 4th to be exact. Mm. Hey man. That's deep. If you motherfuckers don't get this book, because I think I, I man, I'll be real with you. I think, man, you're going to tell them motherfuckers in the book how you strategically plotted that in a slick kind of way. Absolutely. Man. Uh, they better get the book, man. That you ain't even, I can, that's why I say this is deep. Like, man, it's deep, man. They, 
If you if if y'all don't understand, man, how to chop up game and some real fucking shit, man, get y'all the fucking niggas stop good, playing man. checkers and play chess, nigga. For real, you play chess? In my mind, I okay, play chess. Okay, 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 okay. I like to. <laughs> I, 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 I consider myself. I, I, I consider myself uh, a chess master. I can dig it. No. Yeah, that was a game, checkmate, like a life. motherfucker. Absolutely, that yeah, was. That's a what it came to like, the game man. of life, man. Man, the move that you made on that one, man, I can't even lie, man. You feel me? That's, hey, man, y'all get this book, man. You know what man, I mean? For real, spot, for real. On the spot. Man. On the spot, man. I appreciate man. it. We got Mr. Man, like, y'all Charles Cowley, man, man. Double C, yeah. Man, shit, man, we go in, man, start with Alice. Just follow me on the gram. Uh, <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> Shout out on her gram, man. She'll be sliding through in traffic, you know what I mean? Catch you when you catch it. Looking cute and too. Mm-hmm. As always, man, I'm here on the spot at the spot, man, all around. Once again, one more shot, man. Shout out to Doc TV, first off, you know what I mean? Shout out to uh, in Bama too, you know what I mean? Out there, you know what it is. Shout out to the spot, my nigga right here, you know what I mean? We're trying to make shit happen. And, man, shout out to you, bro, because you're still moving and wiggling, you know what I mean, doing everything, you know what I mean? I've seen you, shh, seeing you everywhere. I appreciate it, I my call brother. you, you hit me, you DR, New York, woo, woo. you tapping in, we gonna keep tapping in. You're this my ain't brother, no you're my brother, I can see you, you're my brother. This ain't no one-time thing, you know what I mean? Absolutely not. Come through, bro. At the spot on the spot, CC Charles Cosby, the original cocaine cowboy. Uh, I just want you guys to be on the lookout for my feature film, directed by acclaimed African-American director, Wes Miller. Uh, we're going to production in the next uh, 60 to 90 days, so it'll be in theaters uh, the first quarter of uh, 2023. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Uh, and stay safe, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, think like a millionaire and hustle like you're broke. That's mm. my philosophy on life. Excellent. Man, I, I just want to thank y'all one more time for the support. Go like, comment, subscribe. You know what I mean? We over here on the spot. Let me, man, shouts out to Rob Nova, Barack, Shout Kendra. Out, <laughs> you feel me? Hey, Alice in Wonderland, Mr. McGlover. You know what I mean? Charles Cosby, man, our guest today. And you know what I mean? Hey, hey, as my guy Blaze would say, shouts out to myself. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Now, nah, man, blessings to y'all, man. You feel me? If you got them badass kids, man, you feel me? Come drop them off. Yep. We teach them, man, a little bit of uh, recording engineering, a little bit of mass communications, as it's called in college, man. We still got balls and toys, too, man. On the real, man. I think man, we still got know. some basketballs, don't we? Mm -hmm. hey. We do. <laughs> some back backpacks. Some balls, backpacks. Some yeah. Toys, some guns, yeah, man. Games. Slide through. Yeah. Man, for real, man. Come through, man. We ain't no daycare. So when we dropping off your kids and then going to the club and no <laughs> fucking shit not coming back, <laughs> get your fucking kids, man. Just, you know, Drop man. It's cool, man. Right. A couple hours or something, shop, man. But yeah, all that other shit. And feed them. Send them with a lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Feed them. <laughs> we got we got basketballs, but not lunch. Man, I'm not say they gonna be eating a cup of noodles and shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Real, man. But yeah, we over here on the spot at the spot, man. Once again, man, I'ma holler. One, one love.